What's up, Gundam Kitchen fans? Got another episode of Gunpla and Games, or Games and Gunpla. So, got another double shipment today. So, we're going to run through that before we get through all this shipment. Let's talk about upcoming events. So, first thing coming up is this Saturday. We have the MVMA Tank Crew Meetup. So, these are uh, mostly armor builders. A couple of them do sci-fi and other type of modeling, cars and all. And it's just a meetup. But if you're not into tank, I still recommend coming through, building some Gundams, and especially if you're into learning how to weather and do realistic paint and stuff like that, these guys are a great resource. I learned a lot last time they were here. Really nice guys. And got to admire their tanks as well. So definitely dudes with a lot of building experience. Cool group. Come through, hang out with them. They will be here. Uh, check the events on my Facebook page, but they will be here, I believe, around 1 o'clock on Saturday. Then, of course, we got Black Friday coming up. I'll announce what the sale is on Wednesday the 21st. But, uh, you know, should be good. And then the next After Dark will be on Cyber Monday. We'll see what we can do for a little Cyber Monday fun. So that'll be the... Uh, after Dark Facebook Live Shop. We will be holding off for any After After Dark. We're going to kind of change the format. So I think we're going to um, PAX Unplugged, which is a gaming convention, the last weekend of November. So on the Sunday. So when we get back, we will try to film one sometime that week and get it up for you guys. And it'll be a little more of a Gunpla and gaming format. So that's what's going on with After After Dark. If you guys are missing that, we will be back soon. Just trying to reformat it, messing with some new software, trying to get our uh, room we're going to shoot it in together. So it'll have a nice new look to it. Then, next big event happening, starting Thursday the 29th. So November 29th, we'll be starting board game night. And that will be about 5.30, 6 o'clock when people start getting off of work to uh, roughly 9 o'clock. We might, you know, if the games are going real good, we might stay a little later, but we're trying to keep it to about 9 o'clock so you can get to work the next day. But that will be a weekly Thursday event. We have tons of demo games. Just got a couple more demo games in. So just got Clank in, which is a deck building game, Small World, and Lanterns. And you can check back a couple of videos ago. I already have a whole rack of demo games and Dave, one of the guys who will help run the Thursday nights, has an extensive, extensive collection. So definitely come through, play some games, bring your own games, bring your friends, have fun, meet people, and just hang out. But that's going to be Thursday, starting on the 29th. If you like uh, White Swords, which is an anime card game, so kind of a little bit like Magic or Pokemon or any of those kind of games, kind of think like that. But very anime based. You can fight your favorite anime deck versus somebody else's favorite anime deck. Uh, I got guys coming on Sundays for that now. So they're here about 1 o'clock on Sundays. If you're into that or want to get into that, swing by on Sundays. Next potluck will be December 1st. So our potluck is our monthly event where you just come hang out and show off your uh, latest Gunpla builds. And, uh, you know, hang out uh, other builders, like-minded builders, and uh, learn some tips and tricks. You can always just ask people exactly what you see something. You're like, oh, I like, how'd you get that nice chrome look? And they're like, oh, was that a new marker? It's a great way to learn. Uh, we are also working on our semi-private D&D room. So we're going to call it Mom's Basement. I have a room in here that has really old-school looking wallpaper. And it's, you know, relatively small. It was like 12 by 14. So... I was going to use it as kind of an extra office or maybe for the mini Z track, but I think it'd be much better as a semi private D and D or party game room. Call it semi private because the walls are pretty thin. They do not have much noise insulation. So people will be able to hear, hear you if you get loud, but uh, otherwise than that, at least we can't see you. And, uh, Oh, update on, um, the Indiegogo, 
I'm starting sending out stuff where people can pick up their uh, stuff. I'm starting from the top down, so the highest contributors down. So anybody who uh, should have a bowl coming to them, I'm working on that. I already got them all divvied out on the table back there. So people have to ship it to. I will ship it to them. have a couple people like uh, Jeffrey hit me up if you think you can make a buy um, to pick it up or I can mail it to you in PA. I believe you live in, live in PA. But obviously, like Megan, I'll get yours out hopefully this week or early next week. And anybody who's local, you can come by and I'll have them ready for you. They're all labeled and ready to go. And then I will get down to the uh, $50 under, $25 and under, and so on, and get those all out to you guys. All right, so let's start looking through this stuff. Let's start down here. These are some pretty cool effects they've been coming out with. Every time I get them in, they fly out of here. This one has explosion effects, and they are straight up orange. But you can also do a lot with these by hitting it with a little bit of like shadowing or airbrushing to give it a little better of an effect. And the bottom is clear, so you can hit that with a clear and make that whatever kind of color explosion you want to make it. And very similar, you have this one, which has a nice uh, explosions going here, and then some uh, rocks. So for like hitting the ground type of effects like that. There's all kinds of cool little things you can do with these. I think there was another. Oh, the lightning one. So, and this is the uh, lightning. So great for figures, figmas, uh, fig arts, or they would work for your Gundams too. High grades mostly. So we got some, uh, we got the Control Blue and Haro. Tilt Rotor Pack. Everybody loves that one. Uh, for you One Piece fans. These cool little chopper models and if you collect all of them they usually build into some bigger model and i think they actually build them through this this time so that is actually really cool biggie pauls was saying he had a blast doing the other mini dragon ball sets so i got another one of these in these are really fun quick builds but you can go crazy with the miniature painting on these as well so, I mean, you can see they look so well done in these pictures. And, you know, take your time. You can get there. Got a couple of bear guys and the GP base. So, that's from the uh, original Bill Fighters. And it's pretty easy, easy to find out temp find templates online. So, you can actually have it all listed with the gun you put on there and everything for the GP base. So, that is a really cool, cool thing to do. And you can actually, it can hold the uh, Gundam LED up there too. They usually see in Master Grades. We got that great uh, Mazinger Z in again. Because that flew out of here last time. So this is a taller version. Still have the, uh, the first version. Ale Strike. So this is the uh, GAT X105, so it has a really cool backpack on this one. Really nice kit. And then super badass grunt suit gear Doga. Great suit to have. You got the Zaku, the uh, Johnny Ridden high mobility version. You got the Seven Swords, Yakushiki, and a beautiful, beautiful matte gold. Uh, GM Sniper, this is the old school one, not the Sniper 2. So if you like that even more grunt suity looking one, this was in uh oh what was this in? Oh I can't remember. Eighth MS towards the end I believe. Shining Gundam, uh the Rumble Rao command set. So this has a Zaku head in here, which is if I remember correctly, slightly bigger and more detailed than those uh XC Zaku heads that came in the little um Gashapon balls. So if you like a little more detail and you want a bunch of uh, characters to do, this is a great way to go. Also has those crazy big shell casings. Uh, got some more of the gear in. Got another Nami in. Then we have the new uh, Impulse. So these are brand new. I should have cracked one, cracked these open so you can see the colors. But uh, let's see what we can do for you. Air. 
must be a little longer of a video. Uh, if you're into only games, skip ahead. If you're a Gundam guy, you might not watch the end. I don't know. You should try both, though. Open up your mind. Diversify. So, yeah. This is as pink as I thought it would be. So, and fairly true colors. Uh, I think like that artificial raspberry kind of color. Like when you see like raspberry sherbet and stuff like that. And then this other color is kind of interesting. I would have never guessed those would have matched together well. I don't know how to describe that. But yeah, some off-white. This has a good amount of runners in this kit too. So, for you diver fans, it's a very nice one. Obviously, some form of an impulse and something else. And I did not read up on this one. Nor did I watch the show long enough. <laughs> and then the other one. So I think we're coming towards the end of Diver sets coming out. Because the show wrapped up. I don't know how much, how many more suits will come out of it. But we have the uh, Def Scythe hybrid so this is the love phantom so it's death scythe and hmm looks just i see a lot of death scythe that's all i see but this is kind of nice because now you're getting a newer version of death scythe which would actually be really cool because you could put um if you get the old wings from a death scythe even get crazy and get the wings off like a 100 death scythe that'd be interesting but you know, you get old wings from a death scythe, then you'd have a really nice, clean death scythe. Hopefully they uh, update this a little bit. Or you can do the angel wings. I know some people were talking about uh, recoloring death scythe in the um, colors of uh, our um, the wing Gundam. So that'd be kind of fun. Crossover. These purples are pretty nice in this. We are looking at, it's a little darker than the camera's picking it up as, a little flatter, um, but yeah, a lot of that purple, you got the uh, big old scythe, and the yellow is not bright yellow, it's a nice color of yellow, so kind of flat actually, it's pretty nice, so I'm liking the colors on that, probably would still repaint it to a nice death scythe. Just me. Then, for you people who like the bling, the blinged out narrative version of the Fenix. So, oh, careful. Warning, might blind. So, just tons and tons of racks of blingy gold. Uh, this one's expensive, it's like $55. But it's gold plated, so not real gold, obviously. Don't melt that thing down. Got the full armor unicorn, um, Camaros Vidar. I haven't seen that for a while. Gray's Eines, uh, Manrati, uh, Zaku 2, FZ, Jagan, Bugu, Zeta, just a beast suit. Love that suit. Uh, Zaku 2, high mobility. Then you got a Yakushiki, a Rick Diaz. You got the uh, prototype goof. Real great Zaku. Spoke about this last video, how great this is, especially for new builders who are just getting in. Um, in particular, this comes with a Gundam marker and obviously an RX-78, but this RX-78 is a little different from most. It has a good amount of extra panel lines for a high grade. So you get to really put some work in with those uh, that Gundam marker. And of course we have the SD slash cross silhouettes does not come with the cross silhouettes frame but can be changed to cross silhouette frames of the nightingale and the zeta and then the big boy got that gundam rx 78 148 scale so this is a big puppy stands about uh, he stands a good amount higher than the box I forget how about how tall they are but they're at least 12 inches tall at least and 
they actually come with a book and it shows uh how some modelers in Hobby Japan and Denkai Hobby uh did there. So this is included the book. Really like the uh that colorway. And then onto the games. So, like we said, part of the move was to expand uh, our selection. So we're into the card games now. So we got Key Forge, brand new game by the creator of Magic the Gathering. But what's unique about this is it's a unique deck game. Every deck is unique. And in theory, you really only need to buy one deck. If you like it, you can play with that deck forever. Until they, I guess they update the game. I don't know if they'll ever get rid of stuff, but... One deck will do you, but if you want some variety in your life, you buy a couple of decks and you try them out. But you cannot intermingle your decks because the decks, each deck has its own unique artwork on the back of the card. So that no, you know it belongs to that deck. So it's a very different take on it. The deck boxes are very affordable. Unfortunately, I ordered two of the these uh, you know, display boxes when I should have ordered two of the starter boxes. So we get in the starter boxes for these. Two are common amongst all starter boxes, so everybody will have the same two decks. So in this case, they are not unique, but they're so you can learn the game. But you also get two unique decks in there as well. This will help you after you've learned the game, then you can try out the other decks and see out of those two decks. But this is enough for two players to get started in the game. And what's really good is that this comes with the tokens that you need not necessarily need because you can definitely, you know, maybe print out your own or use other items. But, you know, so if if you can't pick up the starter this weekend, but you just want to start playing, maybe grab a deck and, you know, just play with some quarters for your tokens and pennies for the other tokens and whatever. And you can uh, make it work until we can get you some more starters in. But basically, like I said, it comes with four individual decks, two are common. So you get these two decks here, which is hilarious because I think computers generate the names for all their decks because they have so many different unique decks. Nobody's saying they're making up names for decks. I think they have some kind of computer-generated deck namer. So some some of your decks may have some funky names. Um, but then it comes with the six keys. So you need three keys each, I believe. 26 ember tokens, 22 damage tokens, 10 power status cards, 10 stun status cards and two chain tracker cards and chains are probably a little more advanced after you've played a lot if uh one deck is used a lot and gets way too powerful there's a mechanism to um kind of taper down its effects nerf it a little bit uh which is i think it's just like you can't draw as many cards in the beginning as the other player but just in case so they kind of build a mechanism just in case these generated decks which are computer generated not randomly generated but they're have some kind of algorithm which is supposed to generate fair decks just in case a deck gets crazy powerful there is a way to nerf it down to playable status then of course we have magic so we're getting into magic i uh we're not going to start friday night magic right away actually i have to apply for it so i will be working on that process to to be eligible for that uh, but if you do play Magic, please come by and purchase product. And if you have a group uh, of people who doesn't really have a home, come by. You can play pretty much any time. Obviously, Wednesday nights are our miniature war game night, but the back room is mostly open. And Thursday nights will be our board game night. And Sundays in the afternoon, the back is kind of booked with uh, the White Swords players. But any other time... During business hours, feel free, bring a couple friends, get your magic in. And same thing with uh, Dragon Ball Super. So I've heard a bunch of people say this is a great game, but not too many stores do anything with it. So got the cards in. If you have a group, you want to hold a tournament or something like that, contact me. We can probably work something out. Every time I shoot a video. <laughs> uh, and here's another good uh, deck building game, uh, Shards of Infinity. So I think that's most of our deck building games that we got in, and or card games. Also got Ticket to Ride, Europe Edition, which is obviously Ticket to Ride is a classic modern board game. We also have uh, Malifos, 
Also a couple Malifaux uh, boosters, extra character. So very good game, Malifaux. Actually uses a car mechanic instead of dice. Uh, Dead of Winter, got to play this during the 24-hour gaming. So I bought it and we broke it open and we started playing. Good game, had a lot of fun with that. So I got another one of those and replace it. Huge restock in um, Battlefront stuff. So we have Team Yankee and Flames of War. A lot of the big box starters. A couple of new things came out. Uh, so I think the Stugs are new. These T60s are new, I believe. So a couple of new, new things. And this should be also new. The 7.5 Infantry Gun Platoon. So a couple of new things and a whole lot of restock. So if you missed it. I didn't have it when you're here last. We got it in. Um, and then we have uh, for the modern tanks, we got the Abrams in. What else did we get for modern? Two Abrams and a Chieftain. So these are also great, not only for just people who want to play the game, but they will also be the right scale for your, uh, your MG Gundam. So if you need something, it's not, you know, futuristic tank, but. Not that the Gundam tanks were that feature is they just have two barrels, but if you want some tanks around your Gundams, there you go. Also, got the uh, D and D in, so got a bunch of the spell cards and the monster cards. So you're all set with those. I think that's majority of them. Um, see, and if it really starts popping, I'll start carrying the figure. So I got one figure uh, in, which is a Demigorgon, Demigorgon, and this is actually, I got a free one from my rep to paint up to show it off, so we will see how that turns out, kind of need you guys help, because I'm not really feeling the paint job on this cover here, no offense to the painter, but just not my uh, thing with all that green, now I can't do that, that's pretty extreme right there, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not at that level yet, but what I'm feeling is either this one with the more of like a baboon, I guess that is, with all that blue around the face. And this is like hair on the uh, miniature. So, which is right here. I would probably use some green stuff or putty and make that more a little lumpy like how it is on a baboon. So I do like that style. So that's style number one. I need your votes. Let me know what you think. Or this style, which would probably be a little easier to do, where it's just mostly brown fur, and then it goes into the uh, green reptile at the bottom with just a little bit of uh, you know, energy effect in the middle there. I can handle that. I just can't handle that other one's a little advanced. That would take me forever to do that. I could probably do it, it'd take me forever. All right, what else we got? And then we got some of the D&D &D books in. So Player's Handbook, got the Everything Guide, and the Dungeon Master's Guide, and I should have the starter hopefully next week. Um, and then we also got a replenishment on Warhammer. And I don't think I've ever had Storm Boys in, so that was new. Uh, this is new as well. The uh, new Kill Team Commander for Tyranids. Um, not sure if I had those before. So yeah, some of these are new. A lot of good stuff though. So definitely swing by this weekend. Don't let this bad weather stop you. Actually, don't let it stop you at all because you need to come out, get something, and then go back home and stay in all weekend and build. Build and paint. That's your job is wintertime. Start stacking the kids up and build and paint. Come out and join us on game nights. Come out and join us for the events. And have a good one. Talk to you later. Peace.